Happy Monday. Hope you had a great week. Hope everything is going your way. I know it's been super hot, but we do live in Havasu, paradise some say, five months of hot, hot weather, seven months of fantastic weather. So I'm hoping that you're having a great week so far. Look, we're continuing our study in the book of Genesis. We're going to round the curve, headed toward the downhill, chapter 47. And Joseph is still my topic as we're going to talk about influence, how Joseph influenced the folks that he was around. Now, I'm not going to read all of chapter uh, 47, and the verses actually that we're focusing on are, are starting in verse 13 to the end of the chapter, so I, I'm going to encourage you to read those. And here's just a little bit of a summary. Joseph used his influence to introduce his family, his father, and his friends to the most powerful person in the nation. Remember, Joseph was put in charge. He was the second most powerful person in that nation. King Pharaoh was the most powerful. And he used his influence to introduce his family because, reminder, there was a famine in the land. And when you have a famine in the land, what are you doing? You're looking for food. You're wanting food. That's actually how Joseph, if you remember a few chapters back, got connected and reconnected with his family and his father and encouraged them. You see, God had a plan for every step of the way for Joseph, all the way from being in a cave to being sold to being imprisoned, to being put in charge. Now you see the rest of God's plan unfolding. And by the way, each of you have a plan that God has prepared. He's got good works for every single one of us to do in advance. He's preparing us to do those. And we, like Joseph, get to connect with that. So here's what happens. The famine in the land, they're in Egypt. People need food, right? So what do they do? What, what are their possessions? So they traded their livestock to Joseph for food. The next year, they're still hungry. There's still a famine. So they traded their land. The next year, they're still hungry. They still need food. They traded themselves basically to serve on the court of Pharaoh. And reminder, everything that Joseph did was not for himself. It was for his master, the Pharaoh. And basically, he allowed people to sustain their lives. Well, they've given up land, they've given up livestock, they've given up themselves, but they need to still live, right? So Joseph, being so smart, he said, well, hey, basically work for the king. And here's all it'll cost you. I'll resource you. You farm the land that you used to own because you're familiar with it, and it'll cost you 20%. That's all. Not 10%, not 50%, not 95%. 20% every year. And when this story was written, that was still in place. They farmed the land, they fed their families, and they gave to the master 20%. Sounds kind of like a tithe, doesn't it? Well, as we fast forward just a little bit, there was also another group of folks that Joseph was passionate about. Those were the priests. Guess what he didn't do? He didn't buy up the priest land, nor did he trade for theirs. They kept their land, and their land prospered. Guess where? After asking Pharaoh, hey, I need some place for my family to live. Pharaoh goes, pick any place you want. If you were Joseph, where would you pick? The most lush, best place, best cared for place. That's what he did. He offered that to his dad and his brothers, and they were prospering there. They prospered there. Joseph fulfilled his calling by protecting that and using God's plan of influence for their lives. Now, at the end of this, as all of us will come to the end of our lives, Joseph's father, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, was dying. He calls his son. He said, I want you to swear to me. I want you to promise me when I die, you'll take my body back to Canaan and you'll bury me with my father's fathers in the family burial. And you know what? Joseph honored his father. He swore that he would do that. And as we read, he did that. So here's my challenge. If you make a promise, if you promise to do something, do it. If God asks you to do something, you follow his directions specifically. The same way Joseph followed the directions here. And guess what? It will turn out to honor God. Whether we see the end or not, 
we will honor God with our lives. God bless you, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Can I pray for you? Father, thanks for loving us. Thanks for giving us this magnificent story. Thanks for helping us understand that you provide all of our needs. And Father, you just ask us to be obedient and to share what you've given to us. Help us to hear clearly what you've asked us to do and follow those directions. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a great week.